another solar session today. It's another beautifully blue autumn day, but it's really cold. The weather's really changed over the last few days. We had a tremendous storm yesterday and it's still pretty windy, so hopefully the microphone's not too bad today. So I'm going to get set up. Uh, I'll show you my setup process, uh, how to capture a panel, make up a mosaic of the sun, how to use flats, and then how to sharpen up the image and see some nice prominences. So whew, let's get cracking. So the first thing we want to do is polar align the mount. And of course you can't do that in daytime by looking at Polaris. So I use the compass on my phone and the inclinometer and that gives me within a degree or so an accurate polar alignment. So this is my setup. I've got a 60 millimeter tunable. It's a really nice setup, very portable, very easy to carry. It gives these stunning views. And alongside that, I use a simple Celestron zoom eyepiece, and that's my visual. And then have a ASI 224, that's my planetary camera. And that's got a, an infrared cup filter on top of it. And then for higher magnification views, eight times two Barlow. So one of the hardest things about solar imaging, of course, in the daytime is you can't see a laptop screen. So I put my laptop inside this black plastic tub and then have a dark blanket that just goes over the top of it. And with that, although you do look ridiculous, it does allow you to see the laptop screen. So of course, you don't want to be looking at the sun while you're observing. So I line the telescope up by using the shadow cast behind me. And once the telescope's a nice little circle, I can then use the solar finder and then when the lights pass through the centre of that dot and onto the rear screen, I know that the sun is in the centre of the field of view. So it looks like we've got one, one active region, one sunspot region, and a few delicate little prominences around the edge. Nothing particularly spectacular or impressive, but what I'll do now is I'll swap the eyepiece over, and then we'll put the camera on, and we'll do some photography. Oh, it's nice to be in the sun. Oh, this is cold today. So now we're lined up, the first thing to do, of course, is achieve a good focus. And with the sun filling the field of view, that's fairly easy to achieve. And I find it easiest to use the limb of the sun to, to judge that focus. Oh, wow. Oh, I say. And then I'm going to adjust the Instagram setting. So I'm round about 80% using the full that field is, of view. That is quite spectacular. And then the next thing to do is to rotate the camera so that the tracking, the slow motion controls on the handset are lined up north-south. So at least I know which way to press the buttons to drive around the sun. Cool. That is really pretty. So the first thing we can do then is take some flats. So the problem with solar imaging is we want to have this nice uniform illuminated field of view. We don't want a brighter region than a darker region. And the problem is when I'm using these low power shots, so I haven't got a Barlow in, is that the sun doesn't fill the field of view. If it did fill the field of view, I could just defocus, get a nice white uniform field and use that for my flats. So I have made, as you can see, two very high tech flat panels for solar imaging. One is made from the white plastic from a cereal box, you know, from the, the what the cereal comes in. Carbon's obviously from a cereal packet itself. 
and then I've cut the plastic to shape and just literally gaffer taped it down. And that is the white plastic from a milk carton. And both of these work just fine. I've tried one against the other. I think I get slightly better results from the milk bottle carton, but I don't know why that should be the case. They're both opaque white plastics, so they both should work. I've read of other people putting t-shirts over the telescope. Remember, you have to repeat your flats every time you set up with a new configuration. So when I pack away, I'll have to do this again next time. And I literally just slot that over the end of the telescope. And it seems to work just fine. So with the flat panel inserted over the telescope, boost up the histogram so it's around about 60%. I think Firecapture says between 50 and 80, so 60 is about in the middle. And I tend to choose 20 frames, no particular reason, otherwise that 20 seems a good number. Press the button and it gives you a beep and we now have evened out the illumination across the field of view across that bright sun. So we're tracking, we're focused and we've set up our flats. Make sure the flat box is still ticked and I'm going to select 2000 frame captures. I'm on SER SER captures. You can use AVI, um, but I just prefer to use SERs, and at least that's a defined format. I want my histogram around about 80%, and I'm deliberately choosing short exposures because the seeing is so bad today. So I'm at five millisecond exposures, and then I'm balanced the gain to make sure I'm around 70 to 80% on, on the histogram. I've got gamma unticked, you don't need that. We can we can brighten things up or darken things down in post-processing, so make sure gamma's unticked. And I'm gonna to move to the top left corner of the sun, and that's where I'm gonna capture my first mosaic, and then I'll do top right, bottom left, and bottom right. You want trouble? I am recording on that one, so that's anything inflammatory. <laughs> it's very noisy, so I'm probably just going to put music over this. Oh yes, I suppose you even have to ask. So I've just realised I'm going to have to move, the sun's rotated round and the telescope is just about to go into the shadow of the garage so I'm just going to relocate a little bit out. I'm quite lazy with this sort of thing so I'll just plonk it down, get the sun in the centre of the field of view and it should be good enough for what I'm doing. So Mrs Radici's kindly made me a mug of tea. We've captured our wide angle views and we've used flats. So now what I'm going to do is put the barlow in and then do some close-ups of those impressive prominences. Right, where has the sun gone? Motor speed at seven. We should have a sun appearing somewhere around now. Where has it gone? There she is, right. So, let's get rid of that. And put the bottom in. There we go. Right. 
So we've got the barlow inserted, so the next thing to do of course is to achieve a focus. And once I've got the focus roughly right, I'll orientate the camera as I did before, so that up, down, left, right are going in the correct directions. Then I'll really check the focus this time, really check we've got a fine focus. And if you look carefully at the screen, you'll see I've got these sort of tiger stripes, these rings around. That's an optical effect. It's typical in hydrogen alpha. It's something to do with interference fringes forming. And the best way I've found to mitigate that is to take flats, and then that cancels out that effect. But this time, of course, with the Barlow in the field of view, where we can look at, we can make the sun, if we swing across to the centre, the sun will fill the field of view. So I don't need to use my homemade gash flat panel. I'll just move the sun to the centre of the field of view, defocus, and then take my flats. Defocus. So as before, I'll refocus, and again, it's easier to do this on the limb of the sun. And I'm going to move the histogram around. I want the histogram around about three quarters, 75 to 80 percent. I've got the flats ticked. I'm going to make sure I'm on SER as before. And this time I'm going to capture, say, 3,000 frames. You definitely want this to be less than one minute. These solar features can move quite quickly. So one minute is around about 3,000 frames, so that's what I'll choose. I'm not going to capture... A few videos of each of these interesting features, this active region and the prominence. 80% flats on. Seeing is absolutely awful. Look at that, it's jumping all the weeks. And when I've got my head in a bucket, our neighbour's friend walked past with their dog, so goodness knows what they think of me sitting here like this. Hi, yeah, uh, you're right. Yeah, how's the sawn off Rottweiler? Yeah. Good, <laughs> good, good. So I hope you found that session useful. I've described my setup from the equipment, the software, the fire capture settings, the flats as well. And what I'll do then, I'll do a part two and show you how I process those images and get, first of all, the wide angle whole solar disc together as a mosaic and then some of the high resolution shots as well. So if you want to see that, then don't forget to subscribe, chuck us a like and I will catch you in the next video.